Hmm. What does that mean? Ouch! Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Reapers. Today, I would like to discuss the capabilities, limitations, and operation of the ANALR 46 radar warning receiver, or RWR, as it's installed in the F4E. One of the limitations of the system is the positioning of the sensors. They're on the tail, wingtip, and the nose of the aircraft. Because of the geometry, it is not able to give you a accurate representation of the radar environment unless the wings are level. Let's see the ALR-46 in operation against what is obviously a very dense and unrealistic system that allow us to step through the displays and switch positions. Uh, standard display, give 360 degrees to the aircraft. Brightness controlled by this knob here. Function of the system controlled with these switches here. Audio here, usually I crank the audio all the way up because the uh, warnings you get from them are very low volume. Lightness of the control panel controlled by this dim function. There is a search radar out there, active. We do not display it because the system is designed to filter out search radars in order to reduce the number of threats that would be displayed on the system. The maximum amount we can have displayed is 16. However, if I go to the search button and press it, it will pick up a search traffic. You heard the beeps indicating we had a new primary threat. That is indicated by the diamond around the S symbol. Also, this number here represents the bearing of this primary threat based in relation to the nose of the aircraft in a clockwise direction. I'll go ahead and turn that off for now. System test, something you would normally do on the ground. Heard the beeps as it transitions through the various numbers. Test completed, takes like 30 seconds. This altitude button, by design, the aircraft was supposed to fly in the medium to high altitude environment. Therefore, they chose to filter out indications of low altitude threats. Theoretically, if you wanted to see low altitude threats, you would push this button. In practice, I don't think it works. And the system power button on and off. As I said, you can display up to 16 symbols on the display. If you want to reduce that number because it's becoming too cluttered, you push this mode button. It will go to the priority mode and filter out all but the top five priority threats. The system is equipped with two threat libraries, one for air and land, one for air and sea. There's also a third library for training. However, that's not been incorporated in this module. If I want to switch to the C mode, all I would have to do is push system test and this unknown button. In rapid succession, notice that a ship appears at the bottom. If I want to go back to the land mode, first I would have to go to the training file by pushing system test and target separate. See the T at the bottom there, and then to go to land mode, system test and target separate. No function, we are in the land mode. Notice we have a flashing U. The system does not know what these targets are, so it is elected not to display them. If I want to display them, I would push this button. We we'll get the new target beep and display those unknown targets. The reason these targets are unknown is because they are SA-8s. The file for this system was developed in the uh, mid-70s, so these systems are newer and the ALR-46 cannot recognize them. Notice the threat symbols are bunched up on each other. If I wanted to expand that to see which particular systems were targeting me, push this target separation button and hold it and notice that 
They've separated it out so I can see the individual symbols better. Currently, our primary threat is the unknown SA-8. It's a bearing of one, one zero degrees off the nose of the aircraft. And notice that the primary threat is now swapping between the SA-8 and one of many SA-2s in front of us. I think the display is becoming a little bit cluttered, so I'll go ahead and go to the priority mode, which will show us the top five priorities. Theoretically, if I wanted to drop this as a primary and make one of these a primary authority, I could, or primary threat, I could push this handoff button and it should go to one of these. Practice, it doesn't seem to work very well. So now we have a primary threat of SA2. It's 20 degrees to the right of our nose. Ah, missile launch. So we have the missile launch indicated by both of these missile or both of these uh, displays activating. You can get a missile launch, and it can either in be indicated by both displays or one display acting independently of each other. If you remember, in the intro, we got shot at by an SA-10. We did not get a missile launch warning. Some of the newer systems will not provide that warning. Also notice that the missile that launched, or the system that launched on you will be inside of a circle. I've got us on invincible mode, so we'll just uh, suck up some missiles while we watch the displays change. I'll go back to open mode. Notice uh, now we have an SA-10 that has popped up, as well as an SA-6. The SA-2 is still a primary threat and has launched on us. The other SA-2 is picked up as a primary threat and launched on us. And we are just sucking in the missiles, right? I want to separate out my symbols. Use the target separate. Now I have a SA-3 that has popped up. If I want to reference these symbols, I can refer to my kneeboard. And you'll notice that we have RWR symbols for the land and sea. Of note, the aircraft are identical between the land and sea file. So next we'll go ahead and go look at the ALR system in operation against seaborne threats. First we'll set up our seaborne file, system test unknown, under the boat at the bottom. Aircraft threat display will be identical to what we saw with the land file. If I separate out these threats, we'll see that there are a number of them. The one on the bottom is a delta wing, which indicates an aircraft that has a pulse Doppler system, such as the F-16 or F-18. The one at the top with the little tail attached is the older type radar, which we represented by, say, an F-5, a MiG-19, MiG-21, MiG-23. So we have unknown threats like we did on the land. I can display those, see what they are. One with the three dots in it is probably indicative of an, a system that is based on anti-air artillery, as well as this one here. It's still a primary threat is one of those unknown threats. It is 350 degrees. Notice that we have an SA-6 symbol that has popped up. This is actually representative of the system that is on the Moskva anti-aircraft cruiser. If I select search, notice that there are search radars out there off the various ships. Current threat is this S or unidentified, uh, unknown threat at the 350 degree position, so the 10 degrees left of the nose. I'll go ahead and deselect search. As the threat symbols approach the center of my display, that indicates they are becoming more of a threat to my aircraft. And that concludes my presentation. I hope it was a value to you and that you have a good day. Push.